So here we go again. Today I'd like to address a question I was asked following last month's uh, demonstration on PaintShop Pro. One of the things that was asked is what is Animation Shop all about? So I'm going to maybe try and show you that. Uh, we'll just go into PaintShop very quickly. We need a blank screen, preferably one with a white background like that. So new, uh, what size? 800, 600, that's cool. So what we can do is really set up some images ready for animation shop. Let's just have a quick look into animation shop. Um, as you can see if you click on the file menu you'll see it's got a separate um, it's got a separate icon here run animation shop and it comes up like this file menu pretty much straightforward edit and paste and what have you view view the toolbar this is what you see on the screen and there we have it. have it. There's not a whole lot to see at the moment. The things we will be interested in is this animation wizard and banner wizard. So we'll come back to those in a moment. I'll just close the program for now. So we need to create some something to animate. And let's do a little bit of um, easy stuff. We can just maybe set the text in here. We'll have it as black. I don't really like writing in yellow. Don't know what that was, but it's gone now. So let's have, I don't know, let's advertise YouTube. Yeah, why not? Howard L. Hall. Just a simple bit of writing, really, that's all I'm af after. And we'll see how we can animate this in a moment or two. I want it a bit bigger than 12. I think probably 22 is m nearer. Let's have a look, see how they look. That's fine. Could even make it bigger than that if we wanted to. But we don't want to get too big and carried away with ourselves. Okay, so we have some simple tests. How is that animated? It's sort of not animated at the moment. Uh, need to add a little bit and pieces to it. If you notice on this bit here, you'll see it's all outlined in a box. Uh, that's a layer. On this picture we have different layers and that is one of the layers that we have. We can get rid of the layer by um, going to layers and merge all, th in other words, flatten everything and it takes it away. So there we are, we're left with this uh, writing. Let's open another little picture here which you'll then get the idea of what we're going to uh, have a go at. So I'll open. And the nice thing about this program is you can have multiple files open at the same time. I'm going to grab a feather. I'll do the JPG first. So it's a simple feather and I want to basically make that just a, a scrolling quill. So if I copy that, when I plonk it over to the other side here edit, paste, and new selection. Right. You'll see as I bring the quill down, it obliterates everything. So really we need to get that a little bit of a, a better point. So the way we can do that is we can s take a sample of the background color, which is white, and from that we can then export it as a transparent GIF. So we click on there, everything that is this colour, um, this white colour, which is the background colour, make it disappear. The problem is we have a lot of white inside the feather. So as soon as we click that we end up with a very hollow feather which is very defeatist. So back to our original picture here, the best way we can deal with it is by actually ta changing the background colour to a, like a green. Um, I'm just going to take that down to one to show you what could happen. If I click on there green, straight away you'll notice it hasn't filled in all the outside edge of the, the feather. So let's just go back and this time we'll raise the tolerance up by maybe 25 I think that's a, a good number and try that. Bump. You see the difference. Um, basically what the tolerance does is find colours that are very very similar to the one we're trying to colour in uh, up to a border of black in this case and there we have it right so now we go to let me just change the background colour here go back to export as a transparent GIF and you'll see now that we just get rid of all the green because uh, areas that match this colour green a tolerance of one we could change a tolerance, tolerance a bit higher than that if you wanted and then that's it we can then save that as our feather one gif which i've actually already done so oh i won't change that
if you do change a, to create a GIF don't save it because you might want to go back to that original picture again so if I go to uh, right I need to open this time feather GIF because I've already saved it as a GIF when I uh, run through this so there we are there we have our GIF again I'm gonna copy that and this time I'm going to paste it as a transparent se selection and that is what I get now okay so what are we doing here what's the what are we trying to achieve right so what basically what we're going to try and achieve is make that an animated um, script and strange enough on this the way I do it I don't know if it's a correct way but it's the way I do it is we start with just the name and then I'll just bring in the pen a little bit now I'm going to save that picture as I'll make a new folder for it I'll just put anims as its name and open that up and we can save that as uh, image 1 PSP I don't want it to be a paint shop pro image I'd sooner it be a JPEG image so image 1 I'm going to change it from image 1 to image 99 and the reason for that will become apparent a little bit later on so I'm going to save that as image 99 I get the warning because that is a separate layer on there well that's fine because I don't want the I don't want to merge the two layers yet because it's harder to undo so okay suppose we have done this because we said uh, there we are flatten all the images there we go that's a flat image now what we need to do now of course is go back a few and then we get our pen back and bring it in just a little bit closer and we'll do a copy of that picture this will seem like total idiocy to people who have never tried this before so we'll save that as image this time 98 and so we'll carry on and it'll give, tell me that every single time I'll go to the bottom of the L of Hall and I'm going to save that image as well this time as 97 and you can see what we're doing here we're creating a series of images so what I'm going to do is just move that out of the way a second I'm also going to get my eraser and set that to be not 82 that's a bit much but I'm going to set it as um, oh probably about we'll try two make it round that's fine and what I'm going to do is just delete half of the letter L and this time put the pen in to there and save that image as 96 I think okay we can now delete the um, the pen we can delete oh dear all of the letter L now and maybe even start a little bit halfway up or a third of the way up this the second L and again and I'm uh, on the keyboard to bring back the picture I'm pressing uh, control shift and E which will bring back my my pen and set it there and then I'm going to save that as 95 again it gives me that warning delete the pen again and this time with the eraser just take out just a little bit more and so we carry on right to the end of this putting the pen tip just at the bottom of where we've drawn uh, do a few more just so as we can get the general idea so we save that as 94 I'll, I'll take it down to 90 94 which is saved and that's okay delete the pen again this time we'll erase the rest of the L and now we're going to come down we want to just delete part of the A as if you'd written this but backwards okay control shift and E will give us the pen back control save as that'll be 93 get the error message 
delete the pen erase just a little bit more probably did that backwards actually because if, if I'd written that it would have been sort of um, like that that idea which did it a little bit wrong but for the sake of this um, I'll carry on anyway so it needs obviously thinking through right so I'll put the pen aside I've just finished drawing the, the round on the H and whoa sorry save as this would be 92 save ok delete the pen um, perhaps just delete the rest of that A it may seem a little jumpy this but you'll get the general idea oh no let's go back let's delete the rest of the A but when I do an H I always do the two down strokes don't you that's what I do anyway and then join up the center remember writing in reverse here okay bring back the pen and if you make a few little like you can see it's obviously I've deleted something there but by the time you get your pen in it detracts the eye from what you're doing okay so this will be number uh, save as and we'll save that as 91 and just do one more for the fun of it delete the pen um, delete the last drawn post and the pen obviously would be coming off the bottom of the L there that's good okay so that will be our last um, sort of save in this I'm not going to do the whole lot because it, it defeats the object to some degree so 90 well call that 90 I think isn't it I don't know if it's a 90 or 91 but anyway it's 90 now so there we are we've finished doing the uh, drawings what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that picture I'm not going to save I'm not going to do anything to that actually I'm just going to leave it now open up the animation shop And in Animation Shop, I'm now going to sh the open the wizard. And this is the Animation Wizard. And it's asked me a few questions here. Um, how, uh, what do you want the total dimensions of the new... Same, as the, same one as the first. Okay, stick with that. We've already got them all the same size anyway. Next, do you want it transparent or opaque? Transparent, I guess. Uh, sources, images may have an aspect ratio different to the animate right we don't need to worry too much about that particularly you need to read that in case you do something different but um, right center frame I always take it you can have it anywhere you can focus it on the top left uh, corner or you can center it on the frame same with the next bit when the image uh, occupies only part of the frame how would the rest be filled with the canvas color with the preceding frames contents so you can have a little bit of movement within the frames okay so we'll move on to the next yes I wanted to uh, I want to play it once um, although it'll probably scroll around on if I play it in whatever I play it in and how long do you want each frame to be displayed in one hundredths of a second I want to each play this ten of them so possibly two a second so that will be like 50 change that to 50 I think it is next what pictures right add images so what we're gonna do is add images on here um, it is limited because it's an older program it's limited by size to some degree um, I'm gonna try open it there we are we're lucky we've got all 10 open you have to bear in mind as well the size of the image the size of the program 10 at a time is good although you can you can sort of make them a bit smaller and add more but you may come across limitations so be very careful with that so there we are that's what we've got here if I just run the animation sorry view uh, view the animation and this is what we get right it's a bit slow and jerky okay but we get the idea um, so I'm going to go back, I didn't save that, so we'll go back to the animation. Again, run the wizard. Unfortunately, this is, this is a, one of the things that go next. It saves all the previous um, settings, so we don't have to worry. So instead of 50, I'm going to change that to 25th of a second. Okay, 
add images we'll do the same as we did before just highlight the whole lot seem to work okay open that and click next and finish let's have a look at it now let's view the animation bump oh well, that's a bit more like isn't it you can see what it's doing it's actually drawing the letters in we could speed that up a little bit more but maybe we'd need a few more pictures there to give it that uh, extra movement however that is the animation um, so file and I can save as uh, save that as an animation one gif on the desktop that sounds good to me click um, do you want quality or smaller size I'm gonna go for the quality click next it only takes a second next all the details you'll see on the screen and they're all pertinent to the individual um, things that you do so that's it let's close that we've done that let's have a look at our animation and we can open that with I think it's default set to opens in animation shop which is it's actually in op opens in paint shop so what you can do is click on the animation whoops and open w no click misclick there open with and if you're in doubt just go to something uh, like Windows Media Center for example that would be a good a good one to run it with okay so it's not playing games or it is playing games I should say open with Internet Explorer is a good one let's go for that here we go okay just run that again to see what we can do open with Internet Explorer away we go there we go it's, that's a bit better something went wrong so that's what we get that's what we see okay that's very short let's have a look at one I did earlier which you might like this one and it shows this this about 100 pictures in each set of the animation here you see it comes in various bits this is uh, this is one I did for Twitch I think it was decidedly scruffy edged and then tidied up a little bit using a bit of uh, shadowing and uh, three dimensionalizing is that a word it is now there we go and all that's done exactly the same way as I did the uh, the one earlier on so there's your animation that's the way animation shop works there we go brings in Twitch YouTube etc that's good enough so there we are that's animation shop that's a quick way to use it obviously it's limited by your own imagination you could go into paint shop pro and I don't know what you can do so many different things is available for you to do let's start with a new page oh dear cancel that let's just have a white background so much easier click new there we have right so I don't know if maybe you want to have I don't know a ghostly drawing or something like that you could, you could maybe draw a little ghost or something a couple of ghostly eyes in there whatever I don't know he wouldn't be happy but he'd be quite sad if he was a ghost there we go and, and then you could I don't know just fill it out with a bit of detail here and you could quite easily let me just uh, a cheap way of doing this that's better yeah that's better so if um, if you wanted you could actually have that little ghost going off the screen and then coming back in or something like that it's uh, yeah easy to do it's nothing spectacular but again using that sort of thing if you just take a picture there and save it take a picture there and save it there and, and so forth till you've really finished and bring it back in at the top take a picture take a picture take a picture take a picture and then that will give you the impression of the, an animation that's it that's all we've got time for on this one today I hope you've enjoyed it I hope it's been a little bit educational for you but uh, you could always send your um, you can always send a couple of your animations if you wish to just to open it up a little bit I'll put my address where to send it to at the end of this video other than that thank you very much for listening please remember to subscribe to my uh, channel I really need the subscriptions I need the views 
makes it all worthwhile and that is to uh, Howard L Hall at YouTube and thank you very much for watching bye for now